This is the WMSC interview of Speed Wolf by Nick Perkel at the Maryland Death Fest. Now guys, state your names and position you play. I'm Reed, I'm a vocalist. My name is Richie, and I play drums. Excellent. Now guys, can you speak about what a radius cloth is and how prevalent they are in Los Angeles and what it means for touring bands? I don't know, I hate those things. <laughs> I hate radius cloths, I think it's crap. It yeah. means if you have a show booked in a city, usually your own hometown, they will say, if it's a big show, they'll say you can't play another show within this period of time and this many, these many miles around the city. So sometimes for a fest like this, they say you can't play another show within 100 miles of Baltimore for two weeks, front, before, and after the show. And if you do, it's breach of contract and they don't have to pay you. Yep. Damn. By the way, we need to get paid. <laughs> it just sucks for bands sometimes, you know what I mean? Like if, like if for us, like playing from Denver, if you come out here, you want to hit everything you possibly can or, you know, anywhere. So it kind of just makes you lose some kind of money or something, you know what I mean? It just it sucks for fans, it sucks for the bands, but good for promoters, which is fine, but, you know. What is the radius clause is for the Maryland Death Fest? Like, how many miles can you not play? They're actually really, they actually didn't say much to us. You know, a lot of the bands here will play, like, after parties and stuff, and yeah. I heard it's, it's pretty it's pretty laid back here, like, from our experience with other festivals. Yeah, I haven't heard of any radius clause that I know of. Yeah. We don't have anything around here for a little while, so. Next question. How did you make the contact of Spiritual Beast Records to get your album Riding With Death pressed in Japan? Uh, we're on Hell's Endbangers Records in the U.S. And Spiritual Beast got a hold of them and asked if they could do it. And then uh, I just negotiated with them and we, you know, did all the money shit and then uh, it happened. They reached out to us. Have you received much international interest in your band since that happened? Absolutely. Yeah. We've, uh, we've got a, 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 from what I understand, a good following in Europe. Um, and now, thankfully, because of serious spiritual beasts in Japan, too. So. Yeah. Any plans uh, to tour Europe uh, anytime soon? Yeah, we're working on one right now. Yeah. Uh, probably this fall, uh, September, October. Probably like a month long tour, uh, not with any bands in particular, but a bunch of festivals and a bunch of you know DIY spots and stuff like that. But uh, like September, the first week of September to the first week of October or something like that. Any countries that uh, you're really uh, pressing hard to hit? Germany. Germany. Ger I mean, yeah, Germany's where all the big go fests are, or Northern Europe, I guess. We're trying to play everywhere we can. Uh, there's. We'd like to we'd like to go to Japan, but it just you know we're working out everything we possibly can whenever we can. So, what types of things do you need to consider when communicating with an international entity about releasing your music or booking a concert or tour? That's a good question. There's a lot of like weird like international law and stuff. So I mean, you get if you if you do a regular signing with a label, you get a normal contract, and then uh, you know within the U.S. and usually the people we work with are all pretty. Honest, you know, spit the handshake kind of deal, you know. But uh, internationally, it's just twice the paperwork and the same contract. Basically, it says, you know, hey, we'll give you this much money up front, and then you let us put, press the record this many times, and then you know, we sell it for this much. You know, that's it. Pretty simple. Looking back at your music video for Speed Wolf, what was your favorite part to make? I don't know. Riding on the van for me was probably the coolest part for me. Anyway. Scary. My mom yeah. hated it. Yeah. But it was fun. Yeah, the, the like video our friends did for us, the funnest scenes are probably the I mean for me like the end scene, you know, we did like get all my crazy biker friends in Denver together. We all you know did like the end scene where we killed the first person wolf or whatever. That was fun. But also, you know, we did a lot of live show footage that was cool. Can you tell me about the differences that your band undergoes in preparations as well as what you expect to achieve playing at a festival such as the Maryland Death Fest or Thrasho de Mayo as opposed to a gig like when you're on tour? I don't know, it's like fan-wise, I think it's it's funner to, in a way, sometimes to play these festivals because you get to play to people that would, from all over the place that you normally not get to play for, you know? Like there's people who haven't seen us here before 
and there's people who have seen us in Philly or DC, so it's pretty cool to have like a big, huge community of, of fans and people who have heard you and haven't heard you to be able to, you know, massively get someone's attention like that. Opposed to like somewhere where you're playing and it's like a hundred kids or, you know what I mean, like just some basement show. This one's like, you know, big national exposure playing for huge amounts of people. Yeah, like we've never been to Europe and, you know, there's European and people here Absolutely. to see us, you know, like, like I mean, not just us, but for the fest, and it's, it's, it, it comes to our advantage, you know, like, yeah. for us it's just Baltimore, for them it's like a big special occasion. Yeah. For this appearance at the MDF, you have an exclusive Fuck Flacco shirt. What did Flacco do to inspire this shirt? Get it up. Just, just all that. That's our answer. No. Our answer is... Hey, peace in the playoffs, man. I was there. I froze my, my ass off. froze my beers off. And uh, we lost that game due to that stupid Hail Mary pass. And so, hey, fuck that guy. They won the Super Bowl. Congratulations. But yeah, we got it this year. He's MVP. He's going he's gonna to have people that hate him. Yeah. Deal with it. you got to live in Baltimore. I don't. And we should have had that game. And that's why uh, we're just football fans. So it's not like a huge thing. We don't hate Baltimore or nothing, you know. Personally, it's just a football rivalry and Broncos fans. Now, your singer runs a record label called Splattered Records. What type of changes have you made promoting and distributing your music after working with Splatter? Um, it's, it's funny, people ask about the little label I do, and um, it's really nothing big at all. And I simply started it just to like put out our early stuff for fun, you know, and like friends' bands in Denver. And then to have like a small distro and you know be able to do wholesale with other distros, but uh, you know it's it, it's helped. I learned a shit ton about pressing records and, and making merch, all which has been applied to our bands. Anything else you want to follow up with? No, I, I think Splatter's awesome for us. You know, he, he's helped a bunch of friends' bands out and just done little stuff. You know, but I think it's cool. I have a shirt, so <laughs> I support him. No. What advice would you give young musicians that are getting ready to release an album on an underground label? On another... On an underground label. Uh, I don't know, I, I, feel like, I feel like nowadays a lot of bands that I meet that are at an underground level, they have the wrong expectations at first. They think that because you get a little bit of attention, you deserve the world, which is not the case at all. And uh, we realized that from the beginning, and that uh, you have to, you gotta work your ass off. You gotta get yourself on the road, and you, and you gotta, you know, tour and, and play shows and lose money and take time off work. And, and it's, and the label isn't always there to make everything easy for you. And I think a lot of young bands have the, the opposite idea. And, and you gotta do it because you love it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like just because you have a label, or even with the DIY label, it's because you love the music and want more people to hear it or have, you know, a little bit of support, you know, they're not going to sell it in Best Buy or, you know, wherever, all over the place, you know, you have to go to DIY places to get it, so, yeah. but it's definitely cool to have. Yeah, yeah like 90% of the time, you know, these labels are people just like us, like, like, people that make the same amount of money we do and do the same shit we do a day in, day out, so, they, you know, like, I talked to Chase from Hell's Headbangers and, you know, we're one of the only bands on this label that tours, and we talk all the time. He's like, dude, I, I don't know how to handle it. I want to help you guys so much, but I can only do so much. And it's it's a cool relationship, but it's, you know, it, it puts things in perspective, you know. A lot of, you know, right now a lot of things are DIY, and I think that's better. I don't really like the whole big wig record, you know, producers and labels and, you know, all that stuff. So it's, a, it's cool to have small people who love what they do and put out what they love, you know. That's really cool to have. Any final thoughts? No, I just want to go watch Midnight. Hey, yeah, Midnight and Venom are playing today. Sacred Rank awesome. is going to be awesome, man. We're Thanks. stoked to be on this festival. So. Thanks for uh, the interview, dude. Thanks. This has been the WMSC interview of Spiegel at the Maryland Death Fest.